Hello, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Live from the Library. Um, my name is Mr. Fernando, and I'm from the Chicago Public Library STEAM team. So can everybody say STEAM team? STEAM team. And you may have seen me or the rest of our STEAM team at um, your neighborhood library branches. You may have seen us at your schools or daycares. Um, you may have even run across us at wig centers or even laundromats. Um, but now this morning, we've gone virtual and we're coming to the comfort and safety of your home. But it's early, so you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, hold on, Mr. Fernando. What are you talking about? What do you mean you're from the STEAM team? What's that? What's STEAM? So I'm going to go ahead and explain to you what the STEAM team name stands for. But I need help with my letters. Do you out there know your letters? All right. So will you help me out this morning and help me with my letters today? All right. Awesome. Thank you. So let's see. The first letter in the STEAM team's name is S. Yes. And the S in the STEAM team's name stands for science. So can everybody say science? Science, good. And next up, we have the letter T. Yeah, you're right, T. And the T in the STEAM team's name stands for, it's a big word actually, it stands for technology. So let me hear you say technology. Technology. And next up, we have the letter E, yes, the letter E, and the E in the STEAM team's name stands for engineering. So let me hear you say engineering, engineering. And oh, we all know this one. We have the letter A, and the A in the STEAM team's name stands for art. So let me hear you say art. Art. And who out there likes to color and draw? Who likes to color and draw? Raise your hand. Just throw me a comment. And let's see. I'm sure you all love doing different types of art. So who out there likes to use crayons? Who likes crayons? Yeah, we like to color with crayons, right? And if not, how about markers? Who likes to use markers? Yeah, markers, all the different colors. Mm, let's see. How about, has anybody tried color pencils? Yeah, who likes color pencils? Or let's see, oh, where are my painters at? Who are my painters out there? Raise your hands. Yeah, we got some painters. And, oh, very important. Who out there likes stickers? Who likes stickers? Yeah, we know we all love stickers. And I'm sure you all make very cool creative works of art. And last but not least, we have the letter M. And the M in the STEAM team's name stands for math. So let me hear you say math. Math. And math and numbers are everywhere, all around us, even when we don't realize it sometimes. So let's see. What were those letters again? We had S. T E A M. And all together they spell STEAM. STEAM for the STEAM team. So let me hear you say STEAM team. STEAM team. Yes. So we've got a very special song to help us remember the STEAM team name. So everybody get your clapping hands out. And if you're joining us live, if you're watching this right now this morning, still kind of early. Maybe you haven't had your coffee yet, or your juice, or your milk. So let me make sure you're wide awake and give me a good shake. Give your hands a good shake. Wake them on up. Shake them, 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 shake them. Yes, awesome. All right, let's get started. What we're going to do is we're going to clap out every letter. So we're going to go S T E A M S T E A M S. T 
E A M. Let's go explore our world. Very good. So there's a couple more words at the beginning of the song, and I'll go ahead and start us off. But when I go like this, when I pull out my clapping hands, that's your signal, that's your cue to help me clap out the letters. All right. Sound good? Thumbs up if you know what you got to do. All right. With science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. S T E A M S T E A M S T E A M. Let's go explore our world. Very good. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Great way to start off our morning. So today, what we're going to talk about for sink or float story time is we're gonna talk about something called buoyancy. Yeah, that's a big word, I know. So how about we all say that word together? Buoyancy, yeah. And what buoyancy is, buoyancy basically is a force that pushes up on an object that is inside a liquid. And that upward force is what determines if the object will sink or if it'll float. So basically, what buoyancy is, it's a big fancy word to describe if something will sink or something will float. And so there's, there's different objects, different sizes, and each object has a different amount of buoyancy. Some will sink, some will float. And later today, we're going to experiment and test out lots of different objects um, that you can find around at your home. But for this morning, one of the most common objects, one of the most common forms of transportation that, if built correctly, will float in water are boats. So today, for your STEAM book of the morning, I have Boats Float by George Ella Lyon and Ben Lyon. And I'm reading this book with permission from Simon and Schuster. Boats have keels, boats have hulls, lifted by waves, followed by gulls. Boats float. Motor boats, row boats, cabins down below boats, sail boats, mail boats, waving from the rail boats. Bow and stern, bilge and beam, from fore to aft, boats ride the stream. Sails and engines, paddles and oars, make the trip from shore to shore. Boats float. Who's in charge of that large barge? Captain at the wheel, first mate on the deck, crew on every level, check what must be checked. A lookout's on the poop deck, controls are on the bridge, the bathroom's called the head, the galley holds the fridge. Steamboats, fishing boats, Gondolas, skiffs, banana boats, billy billies, both ships adrift, boats float. When seaplanes land, they land on floats. So on the water, seaplanes are boats. If a boat can dive and travel unseen, beneath the waves, it's a submarine. Houseboats, sloops, river wherries, car, train, and people ferries. 
pirate ships, sampans, junks, canoes, so many boats. How can you choose? Boats, 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 float, float, float. Want a small boat, but not very tall boat? Try coracles, dinghies, bathtubs, rafts. So short that four is almost aft. The smallest boats are ships in bottles, but they don't sail, they're just models. Toy boats, bath boats, scrub a rub a dub boats. Want a grand boat? A travel far from land boat. Board an ocean liner. Voyage for a week. Climb from deck to deck to find what you seek. Bowling alley, movies, ice cream, books, and the million colored ocean everywhere you look. If the day is blazing and you want to get cool, jump right into the ship's swimming pool. And if you stretch out and float, you'll be acting like a boat. Boats float. The end. All right, yes. Did you like our story? Yes, so many different kinds of boats. And next up, I have a rhyme for you about five little sailboats. Yeah, five little sailboats. So first, let me see. Can we all count to five? One, two, three, four, five. So let's go straight to five little sailboats. Our sailboat. One little sailboat with the sail so blue. Along came another. And now there are two. Two little sailboats sailing on the sea. Along came another. And then there were three. Three little sailboats sailing close to shore. Along came another. And now there are four. Four little sailboats can't wait to arrive. Along came another. And now we have five. Five little sailboats in the wind they rock. It's stormy out here. Let's go back to the dock. Yeah, all right. So five little sailboats. So we were talking about buoyancy earlier and the ability to float or sink. But let me clarify something. The weight of the object doesn't necessarily mean it'll, it'll sink. So the way something floats is when that object enters the water, the, the amount of water or liquid that the object displaces, that it moves, that's what helps you determine if the object will sink or if it'll float. If the weight of that water that moves out of the way, if that's greater than the object, then your object will float. And if not, then it'll sink. So it doesn't necessarily mean how much something weighs or how or how uh, big or small it is. Because something as small as a pebble can sink down into the water. And something as large as a boat will float. So um, surface area uh, also determines um, if something will sink or float. Like if you go swimming, um, if you ever go into a pool or if you've ever gone swimming at the lake, um, or maybe even safely in your bathtub, when you step into the water, you touch the bottom, right? But if you lay on your back, 
it's a lot easier to float. So, and as I promised, I have an experiment for you. We're gonna test out different objects to see if they will float or sink. So I have a little tub of water and I've collected different objects and you can grab pretty much any object that you have permission from at home. I grab baseball, I have some pom-poms, I have a piece of tree bark, I've got, I've got a magnetic ball, I have a Lego, a Duplo Lego. Um, I have a little wooden block. I have a button. I'm curious about this one. And I have a little sailboat. So let's go ahead and let's test out all these different objects. So, and go ahead and make your predictions. Take a guess if the object will float or if it'll sink. And if you'd like, drop a comment if the object will float or sink. So let's start with start with the baseball. All right. Do you think it'll float or do you think it'll sink? Who out there thinks it'll float? Raise your hands. Who out there thinks it'll sink? All right, let's see what's gonna happen. Yeah. Went to the bottom. It sunk. And next up, let's see, how about our wooden block? Is it gonna float or is it gonna sink? Ah, this one's floating. All right, yep. right there in the middle, it ended up floating. And next up, how about the blue pom pom? Is it going to float or is it going to sink? What do you think out there? Float or sink? <laughs> Definitely floating. Definitely floating. Barely even went into the water. <laughs> and next up, let's see. How about the piece of wood I have? The tree bark. Is it going to float or do you think it will sink? So it's pretty heavy. Let's see. Technically, I think this one's still floating. It didn't go all the way in, but it displaced enough water that it's almost way down at the bottom. But there's still a little bit of room right there. So I guess technically it is floating. And how about our magnetic ball? It's going to float. It's going to sink. We'll stay in the middle. Oh, no, that one went straight down, straight to the bottom. And let's see. How about the blue button? Now, the reason I'm so curious about the button is because there's four little holes right in the middle. So I'm very curious if that's gonna affect uh, the button's ability to float or sink. So what do you think? Is it gonna float or is it gonna sink? All right, let's see. Yeah, it sunk. Probably what happened is because of those holes, even though it's a flat surface, the water goes through those holes and it just, it goes on top of it goes on top of the button, which ends up pushing it down into the water. So even though it has a flat back, a flat surface, it wasn't able to float. And how about a rubber ducky? Yeah, the famous rubber ducky. Is it gonna float or is it gonna sink? Yeah, you're right. It's probably, yeah, I think it's going to float. Yeah. 
Yep. It's floating there. Rubber duckies. And how about the Lego? Our Duplo. Is it going to float or is it going to sink? Now, this one has lots of different grooves, different openings. So this one has me curious too, if it'll float or if it'll sink. No, oh, looks like it's floating. It's kind of starting to turn. Some of the water's getting, but it's floating. It's right there in the middle. And last but not least, our boat. And if you were with us for our story, the boat should float. Yeah, there goes our boat. All right. And like I said, you can test out pretty much any object that you have permission to use at home. Um, doesn't have to necessarily be these objects that I chose. You can choose something else. Um, so maybe later on today, you'll do, you'll do this experiment uh, yourself and maybe you'll use some of the same objects. Maybe you'll use some, of the, some different objects. But I've got a question for you. I've got a super, super important question for you. Probably the most important question I have for you today. Who out there wants to learn to become a super great reader? Who wants to become an amazing reader? Raise your hands. Who wants to, yeah, who wants to become a really, really good reader? Yes. And I know you're all probably learning how to read already. You're learning your letters, you're practicing your letters, you're learning how to spell your names, you're maybe practicing how to write your names, you're learning different words and you're practicing different words. And I promise you, I promise you, as you get older, you're gonna become even better readers. But there's five things, five things the STEAM team suggests you do to help you become those super awesome readers. So everybody repeat after me, please. Talk, talk, sing, sing, read, read, write, right and play and those are your five early literacy practices of reading and believe it or not all five things work together to help you become super awesome readers so what are they again repeat after me please talk sing read write and play we got one last special song to help us remember those. So everybody get your clapping hands out one more time. And our final song is going to go like this. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Talk, sing, read, write, play. Makes a reader every day. Very good. Round of applause for everybody. Yeah. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining me this morning for Live from the Library. And we'll be back again next week, Tuesday, 10 a.m. again. So uh, please tune in again and join us next week. Uh, let your family members know. Let your friends know. And um, have a great rest of your day. Have a great and safe week. And um, hopefully we'll get to see you next week. All right? Have a good day. Bye-bye, everybody.